Hey, it's Mike from Lakeshore 3D, and in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of using the Xtool RA2 Rotary. The Xtool RA2 Pro Rotary accessory brings a new dimension to your laser engraving. By rotating the object as the laser travels back and forth, the rotary engraves your design around the object. The RA2 can be used with the included rollers or the chuck attachment. This video is limited to the chuck attachment. Engraving rotary items is a little different than engraving flat objects. Once you understand how the rotary moves the object under the laser instead of just moving around the item, the difference will be obvious. There's not enough room under the laser module for the rotary, so you will need to raise the machine to make room for it. The RA2 comes with riser blocks, each having three possible heights. These raise the M1 so that the rotary fits underneath the laser head. The riser blocks are installed under the M1. More on that later. If you have the riser base, you'll use a shelf in the riser instead of the blocks. In this video, I'm going to use a cardboard practice tube because I'm bound to have to record this more than once and I don't have that many tumblers. If you aren't very particular about where your design goes, you can just mark the left side and eyeball the design placement. I use a piece of angled cardboard and you can simply mark yourself a straight line. This will be to align the software with the top center. So we would do that to have a top center line and then you would simply align your design in Xtool Creative Space and start your engraving. However, we want to align this over the logo on our imaginary tumbler. Before positioning the item you want to engrave, you'll need to know the dimensions of your design so you can properly center and position it. Select the design in the Xtool Creative Space and note the height and width of the design. For my design, I have a height of 20 millimeters and a width of 40 millimeters. I like to make a paper template of the design bounds. It's much harder to make a mistake when you have a physical representation of the design. First, we'll mark a center line where we want the engraving. So I'm going to center this on the logo. And I'm going to take a piece of tape. And I'm going to place that right straight up the middle. Centered on our logo. And then I'm going to take my design, and that's going to want to be centered there. If you want to get really particular, you can measure the top and the bottom spacing. I'm going to eyeball it. So we're going to set that there. So now we know that we want our design there. We're going to mark the left side. I leave about a millimeter or so on each side. Since this is smaller, it's a little bit more difficult with my tape. There, now we have our left and our right. I'm going to mark my top and bottom about where it's going to go. Okay. I'll actually take my design here. I'm going to mark it on the left. And I'm going to mark it on the right. Just in case we want to turn the chuck around and grab it from the other end, we have both sides. If you know positively you're going to grab it from here, you can do just the left side. So now that we have there, we do not need our center anymore and then if you want you could also mark your top and bottom this helps with framing 
so you can make sure it's going in the right spot. Again, I leave just a little bit around. When we frame, our design should go right inside that. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier was I marked the halfway point between the top and the sides so I knew where the, side, the center of each dimension was. Now, when you go to laser, this line here will be the top center where you put the yellow line in the Xtool Creative Space. Next, we need to measure the item that we're going to engrave with the tape measure included with the RA2. Place the tape around the item in the center of the design area. Center this way, if it's tapered. If it's not tapered, it doesn't matter. Simply feed it through the slot, like so. This measurement will be the perimeter or circumference of the item. Take note that the enumerated numbers are in centimeters. When we enter the number in the software, we need to enter millimeters. There are 10 millimeters per centimeter, so just times it by 10 to get the millimeters. Take note of this measurement. Here we have a measurement of 19 centimeters or 190 millimeters. The second bit of information indicated by the tape is the level that we need to raise the machine with the wood blocks or if using the riser base which shelf to use this is indicated by the greek letters alpha beta gamma crossed here it looks like an a b and a y there's three possible values for using the roller the chuck and the rotary attachment gear we're using the riser gear chuck setting so when we put this on here we have 190 millimeters which is in the red zone the red zone is in the gamma range so we will be using the gamma setting for the riser base or the blocks this is also indicated by the setting numbers on the block. Next we're going to place the shelf in the riser base. If you were using the wooden blocks you would place the wooden blocks under there. We have the gamma setting here so we're going to put our shelf in the riser base. Next we're going to connect the RA2 to the back of the M1 with the connector that's commonly referred to as an aircraft connector and run the cable into the back of the M1. Next we're going to place the rotary in the M1. We're not going to connect the cable yet. You want to place this for your center line, for your left edge, lined up with the center axis of the chuck. This is where you'll want to auto measure. First we'll select laser center cylindrical and we will choose auto measure which for me always fails. I don't know why. So at this point you can select manual measure this will unlock the laser head. At this point you can move the laser head above your item, use the measuring tool provided with the RA2, and you can measure from your item to this mark. Ours is coming out at 24 millimeters to the top edge of the laser module. We'll enter that dimension in here and that will retract the laser head at this point we also want to select chuck 
I put in our parameter, which was 190, if you remember from before. Diameter will be automatically calculated. If you measure the diameter, you can also put that in, and the parameter will auto measure to the other. Now, this is where we want to line up this left edge with the center. This is where the lasering is going to start. It's going to go back and forth and laser as it rotates. So once we have this lined up for center, we can plug in the RA2. That will now lock the RA2 from rotating. Slide our honeycomb back there. Now in the software, you can drag this yellow line. That is the top center of your item in the rotary. Not the left edge, but the top center. Your design is going to get wrapped around as the rotary engraves. The laser is going to travel back and forth and the, the item will rotate under wrapping that design around. So at this point, we'll take our design, which you can see here was our 40 millimeters wide, 20 millimeters high, and we can position this lined up with the left edge with the yellow line. At this point, you could process, which I'm going to have to close my lid, so I will come back and do that in a second. this point we can set our settings we're going to do an engrave I have no idea what to use on this so we're going to do power 70 we're using user-defined parameters we'll hit process I just saw something funny we're going to go back see here it moved after we set something there. So I'm going to move this line back and that there. Always double check everything's just fine before you start. We're going to hit process. We're going to hit framing. We're going to press the button on front of the M1. And we're going to see that this is going to draw a box where it's going to engrave. That was pretty good. If you need to readjust, just click framing completed and try again. If you should come in and set your speed to 180 and your power to 1, otherwise you may end up uh, scoring on a tumbler and leaving marks. So our framing went good. We're going to hit start. Press the button on front of the machine. And let's see what we get. You notice the lasers going back and forth and the rotary will be turning. While this is working, if you grab the tumbler or whatnot from the other end instead of the base, you may have to flip your design over. That can all be done in the software.
and it helps to uh, turn on any external air that you've got. This might get loud. I forgot to turn on my external fan. One more letter. Okay, now, now we get to see how this turns out because uh, I didn't try this yet. for a uh, wing it. It's a uh, peel off our tape. And there we go. Okay, future Mike here. Uh, while I was editing the video, I didn't realize that me not being used to a small 1080p screen that I'm using for video capture, that I missed some of the settings. So if you use the mouse wheel or the scroll bar here, scroll down, you'll have speed, lines per centimeter, and your directional settings. Uh, speed, obviously, is how fast it's moving, how many passes to do, uh, lines per centimeter, that's how many lines it's going to engrave per centimeter, and your directional, uh, bi-directional will engrave going both directions, and unidirectional will only engrave going one direction at a time. Uh, so you'll have to play with these settings. Uh, after a while you'll get used to what, what to put them at. You'll have to do tests for each type of material. Uh, that's just the nature of laser engraving. Uh, you can also scroll up to the top and use a user-defined material. Uh, for example, metal business cards. A lot of people use that on tumblers. Uh, if you select that, you'll see that it changes the settings, but it doesn't let you change them. So you can just take a note at what these settings are, 90, 250, 100, you know, 1. And then you can go up and choose user-defined. And then come in here, do your settings of 90, 250, and so forth it'll do the same thing all the presets do is preset these and lock them so go ahead and play with that that's the fun of laser engraving so thanks for watching I hope this video was helpful